Guys, hope you're keeping very well. I'm Andrew, this is a lockdown kitchen session, and today I'm cooking beef. So for any of my vegan friends, you may want to turn off now. But for anyone sticking with me, I'm super excited about this plate because it's a rolled brisket of white park beef. Now white park beef is the most ancient of breeds in the UK. It's a traditional rare breed. It's a very rare breed in fact. There's not too many producers uh, raising them these days, but the guys at Lions Hill Farm, you can follow them down in the comments. They sent me this uh, and I, I wanna tell you why it changed my life. About 18 years ago, I thought I knew about cooking meat uh, and eating beef and steaks. I was obsessed, but I actually knew nothing. It wasn't until I had a, a 70 day dry aged uh, sirloin of white park beef and it was incredibly marbled and the smell it was this intense smell like a hundred roast dinners cooking in your house and then the flavor just hit me it spanked me in the mouth I was like wow um, and it ruined beef for me so uh, from then on I nothing tasted quite like that and I was chasing that uh, flavor of white park so I got obsessed with uh, rare breeds I got obsessed with dry aging and I've done that through my restaurants and in my cooking ever since. If you're gonna eat meat, eat the best meat money can buy because it just, it, it will change your life. Just trust me on it. And you're supporting small farmers, regenerative farmers. You're not supporting the industrialized food system. So eat meat when it's really, really good. That's what I'm saying. White Park beef, uh, it's an ancient variety, as I said. And King James I in 1617, he loved his loin of beef so much that he knighted it. And that's where sirloin comes from. How about that? I love these fun facts. The guys uh, at Lions Hill, they sent me this. Uh, they wanted me to do a couple of recipes. I'm gonna actually do three recipes. This is quite big. I'm gonna break it down into three pieces. And over the next three weeks, I'm gonna give you a different recipe. How about that? I've just cut this into three pieces. And one of the things you notice immediately is the marbling on that. Can you see? It's quite insane. And the smell, for the amount of meat that I've butchered and handled, this is some of the best I've ever, that really does smell pleasant. It's a, it's a nice sweet beef smell. Wow. Um, brisket, it's from the belly. It's a, it's a tough cut. You need to give it some love. So low and slow. Uh, it's, the, it's the number one cut for uh, Texan style barbecue where they cook it for 18 hours. Um, you could poach it like they do in Vietnam for the, the, the soups, the, the noodle soups called pho or pho. Um, and you get a few bits of shaved brisket on that. It makes a, an incredible stock. Uh, what else? You could just roast it like you would for a good old English Sunday roast, uh, but I'm going to pot roast it instead. Uh, that means just doing it with a little lid on in a cast iron pot and a little bit of liquid in there as well. The thing is, if I was to take a traditional style uh, English pot roast or you know something European, I'm not necessarily sure. We've got glorious hot weather at the moment, so I'm going to take some inspiration from you know warmer climates uh, and how they might handle uh, a lovely piece of beef like this. So uh, I'm going to be inspired for this first recipe by Thailand and we're going to do a little Thai pot roast brisket um, and see how that comes out. Never done this before by the way. Uh, <laughs> this is trial and error. I think it's going to be great but uh, it's, it's taking the classic pot roast and putting some Thai flavours in there. So I've actually just been sealing this off in my little pot, smoking the place out. I've just sealed it off in some coconut oil, not much, but that's it. We've got a nice colour on the outside of that. And while there's uh, the rendered beef fat and then there's the, um, the coconut oil in there, I'm going to put in some uh, ginger, some garlic. I'll put all the, rest, um, the ingredients below, the actual quantities. We've got some kefir lime leaves, some chopped lemongrass. Um, I'm going to put in this uh, ancho chili and a Kashmiri chili. So one's kind of warming and the other one's like a little spicier. 
lime juice. Lions Hill Farm also sent me lots of uh, beef bones. So I roasted them up, made a really intense stock. And then from that stock, I reduced it down to this delicious uh, demi glass, got a little wobble to it. And I chopped it down into pieces and I leave it, wrapped it in cling film and leave it in my freezer. So I'm just taking a little bit of that. You can use uh, um, ice cube trays as well for doing this, but good little trick and handy to have in the freezer, right? So we're gonna put a little bit of that in there. Some fish sauce. And I'm gonna put coconut water in here. So not uh, coconut milk or cream, water. So the glass of that. And we'll just stir that round. And that's our little, um, it's not much of a broth, but it's a little bit of uh, liquid to help it stay moist and uh, aromatic as well. So we'll put that lump in now. I've got my oven on 160 degrees and I'm gonna check this after about three hours. Just gonna make a little sauce for this. It's gonna have its own gravy, but I figured I would do a nice punchy uh, pepper sauce to go with it. So it's inspired by a Thai sauce called Nam Prik Ka. And I know some of my friends will tell me I'm doing it wrong, but inspired, remember. Get out of jail, free card, that word. All right, so I've got some pasilla chilies, um, which I'm just tearing up and putting in there. I've got these uh, Ramiro peppers, or long sweet red peppers, which have been roasted, and they can go in there. Just peel them down a little bit. Should have done this before, and shouldn't I, really? All right, and I've got some uh, garlic cloves, about four large garlic cloves. And I've also got about four cayenne peppers or just red chilies that have been roasted. I'm gonna keep the seeds in, I want it punchy. Uh, last bit of this. And we'll whiz it up with a stick of lemongrass and see what it's like. I put fish sauce in and I put lime juice in as well, just to whiz it up. You're gonna to wanna to take the seeds out of the chilies, but that's good. It's a nice pokey sauce to go with this beef. Let's look at the beef. Shit. All right, the beef, it's insane. I'm gonna put it on this plate here because you can't really see it in this pot. But if you have a look, can you see that? It smells amazing, that fish sauce, that lemongrass, the kaffir lime coming up, it's insane. The, the, the sauce itself, there isn't much left, and a lot of it is fat. The fat renders out while it cooks. But I would skim that fat off and use it for something else. Anything that you might cook uh, beef fat in. So I'm sure it's gonna make, it'll make some amazing beef fat Thai style potatoes. I don't know, think about it. Um, I'd be inclined to cook some vegetables in it. Uh, like I say, lemongrass, lime, there's chili in there. It's very, very fragrant. So don't think of it as just beef dripping. Uh, with this, it's up to you what you want to do with it. I would, uh, I'd be inclined to shred it down, mix some of this uh, sauce with it. You can strain all the, the, the stuff out of it. Put it on now, serve it with this lovely red sauce and maybe some little lettuce cups, uh, some shredded vegetables, pickled cucumber, uh, lots of herbs, mint, coriander, that kind of thing. But there we go, that is a Thai style brisket of beef.